Hey, welcome back to the channel this morning. I am uh, in the shop and uh, gonna continue working on some of the details that I was working on the last time you saw me. Um, one of those was just getting the um, shoulder harness um, cable. That's the last uh, piece that goes down the rear part of the fuselage. So, um, so you can see how the uh, harness just laps over kind of my my section right here it just laps over there and uh, it'll connect uh, here with the cable and it goes uh, from there uh, back to here it loops down underneath and back up and then uh, connects here with a swage and a uh, thimble and uh, that uh, we'll get that in uh get that in place and i'm debating as to um like i can't actually do all of this connection now i can do the connection there but there's a sequence here that kind of has to be followed and part of that sequence is just going to be uh kind of getting everything in place i believe i can get pretty pretty easy access from here uh I'm sure I can kind of, you know, fish the cable through here and get, get a hold of it um, so that I can uh, actually get that done, <laughs> I'm thinking as I'm talking, so that's what you see happening there. But anyway, uh, I'll just run a cable for now, just temporarily, just so I can sort of see how it's going to lay in there and uh, see if there's anything special that I need to do to uh, accommodate it. So. Okay, let's uh, let's start there. All right, and just so you know, I said temporary. It's a zip tie. Don't worry about me. I got it. <laughs> so that's going to go all the way back here. And. Uh, now that I now that I look at it down through here, I'm really not concerned about it. It's gonna um, uh, it's not gonna really cause any problems. I I mean I could route it. I could route it if I wanted to. Um, I could I could bring something here to route it through, and then I could bring it just kind of over here and route it through. Um. All right, so um, I decided to uh, actually, there was room for me to go right through that uh, piece that I had there, and that will, uh, that will work out fine for right there. I'm just going to make a little fair lead out of some of the uh, UHMW for uh, this station right here. And just drop that down a little bit and then I'll just have a straight run from there back here then I don't have to worry about it dropping down and um, coming in contact with anything and when this is uh, up here all the way um, it'll sort of act as a stop as well because um, the other piece comes in and captures it let me find that um, <clears throat> The other piece will come in underneath here, and, and uh, I'll have to drill a hole in it, but um, it'll come up like that and capture it, and then I'll cut a little bit of that out so that this will be basically well captured in there. Um, it won't move a lot because uh, it'll be fixed at the back there. so. That was uh, the easiest way to deal with that one because I was still wanted the cable to be toward the center. So, so in order to get it there, um, that's the only way I can really do it is go there. I don't want to go through the structural member. Um, so, and uh, yeah, that's good. I just want to hold it there, and I'll figure out a, I'll figure out something for here. Um, I may be able to accomplish this with the. 
a couple of uh, a couple clamps as well um, but uh, I'll work on that but right now I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of put this in place where it needs to be I'm just using some some orange uh, permatex thread locker it's a uh, high strength but removable I'll go ahead and uh, put some on the other one here and then we'll tighten this uh, we'll tighten this up once I get that tightened I'll flip it over and then we'll be able to um, go ahead and uh, install this cable um, because the other end will be able to run through the uh, through everything up here and yeah so <clears throat> I think we're in uh, good shape here, and I'm pretty sure I've got a good direction. <laughs> I, got, I almost feel like I should um, put the control stick in while I'm doing this, uh, just to make sure that I've got that back there correct. And I also have to install the, uh, uh, this is a, uh, something that's required on this uh, Teleflex elevator cable. Um, it's basically a safety um, deal. I've got some Tigon tubing here and uh, what happens is after you get this threaded on and kind of locked in place where it's going to go um, back here somewhere. I'll show you. Probably want to back this one off just a little bit. What we'll do is um, this tube goes all the way goes all the way back here, and uh, and then it gets connected there and it gets connected here. And what what this is doing is if this uh, if this crimp in here was ever to come loose um, underneath this uh, rubber here, right here where this is crimped, if that was ever to come loose from there, this um, will actually hold everything in line so that uh, you don't get it your elevator ca cable is not going to bind on you um, so if you didn't have that you know as you can see this could rotate and you could end up in a situation where it could bind up on you so this um, safety just kind of holds everything in position where that can't happen even if that does come loose so that is required um, not something you want to forget about so I'm going to get uh, uh, get squared away here, and I'm thinking in my head as I'm doing this. I wish it was a little warmer in here. I'd like to paint the uh, control stick and its components um, before I put them in, because uh, when I put them in, I just want to I want to leave them. So uh, I may. It should warm up a little bit. I don't know, it's about 60 degrees uh, right now. I'd like for it to warm up just a little bit more before I start spraying some paint. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just getting, they're getting painted the same, the same uh, zinc phosphate um, as everything else. So everything meaning the it, components that you can see, the hinges, the hinges here are painted that color and then I'd like the control stick and stuff to be painted that color you can see I've got my uh, cover that goes over my elevator trim uh, painted that color and yeah so um, I'm going to uh, make this other figure out this other fair lead here for the uh, shoulder harness cable and then uh, I'll be right back all right, so you can see the uh, you can see the setup now, and what I did on this end of the tube, um, I got this one all the way kind of back on the threads, so um, so that's good. I got the nuts really nice and tight, and uh, I'll come back and put some uh, um, um, put a little permatex or something to uh, make a mark 
so I can see that those haven't moved uh, quickly. And uh, here I just cut a piece of a uh, piece of the tubing, um, and I just shortened it and put it on the inside of this tubing, and so that gave me a nice uh, a nice tight fit. So now we're uh, all good there. So now I can flip that around and put that uh, put that back in here. And once I get that, well, actually, before I put that in, I'm going to just flip it over, and then I'm going to. Uh, I've got to run the uh, run the cable through there, and basically, the cable is going to come in through the top. Let's get the right cable here. It's going to come in through the top. It's going to loop under. It's going to loop under here, and then it's going to come back out this way. That was my finger, not the uh, piece. <laughs> um, it's going to come back out this way. And I, although I think it goes, I better look real quick. I don't think it goes like this. I think it actually goes under underneath the uh, the whole control cable. So let's take a look. Yeah, you can see here, it actually loops under the control cable. Uh, interesting that I don't have that many threads on mine. Um, but anyway, it's all good. So I'm going to take that back out of there and uh, uh, just, well, actually not to take it out. I just have to loop it under. So it's just going to go underneath here. And then it's going to go back up through the hole. So here's the interesting uh Oh, well, as my son would say, here's a fun fact. <laughs> so in uh, um, the FAA's uh, AC 43-13-1B, um, that uh, I should have gone here first before I started doing my swaging, and I would have learned something um, that I didn't know. I was um, working really hard to get three crimps on uh, a 332nd swage and uh, lo and behold a 332nd swage 18-2-G is exactly what I have is only required to have one press <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I can get two easily um, it's a uh, um, kind of kills me that it was only required to uh, to have one, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of nuts. But uh, I was trying really hard to get three, and I did on the rudder pedals. I got I got three decent ones, um, but it's only required to have one. So uh, I found that to be uh, um, well. When Gus showed it to me, I appreciated the knowledge for sure because I read the whole chapter here. And, cables <clears throat> and I was going for this every time but for 330 seconds cable it's not required so okay um, I just thought I would share that with you I thought it was fun 43-13 uh, um, it's good to uh, have one of those on hand so it covers everything all right so I got um, I was gonna show you kind of where I left off here I already uh, showed you this. I got all this put together and uh, I got those bolted together permanently. I got the cable done and I um, have some heat shrink tubing, but I didn't bring anything to shrink that with, so I need to bring that next time. And I uh, got the second coat on my landing gear legs. I hadn't done that yet. I thought I was done with the, at least the fuselage part. We got a lot over there to do, but um, we got this anyway. Um, the uh, other thing I did was I finished off the nut plates on here and I ran into an issue here because um, this one actually was too close to too close to that in order to uh, in order to fit it in so I've actually epoxied some blocks in behind there and what I'll do is I'll tap that 
Um, I'll tap those out, um, drill and tap. So it'll be the same screw as everything else. It'll just be uh, tapped wood just for that one, but you can see all the nut plates um, everywhere else are all good. And then these on the back side here are actually screwed in because they go through a double layer. They come from the outside here. <clears throat> They're going through a double layer, so. And then I also got the uh, pitot static tube um, kind of anchored in place here. If you can see that underneath there. I got my um, components to my stick partially painted, um, at least half painted, so those are uh, those are down there drying. And uh, yeah, so got a lot done today, and um, thanks for hanging out with me. You know I appreciate it, and um, as always, I will uh, I'll catch you later, real soon, I'm sure. All right.